Praise the Lord, everybody. God bless you. This is Pastor David Childs, First Antioch Baptist Church. We are going to get back into our weekly Bible study. We are studying the book of Genesis. We have come a long way on our journey. Last week, we, or the week before last, last time we studied Genesis chapter 26. And we are, today we're going to go to Genesis chapter 27, but just in a way of review, just so you can, just to remind you of what we dealt with on last week, let's look at chapter 26. Um, in Genesis chapter 26, there was a famine in the land. Um, we saw, there was another famine and we are dealing with Isaac. And in that process, the Lord appeared to him and told him to go to Egypt dwell in the land, which I should show thee of, and sojourn there in the land, and I will be with thee and bless thee. So we see that thing with Abraham, we see, then we see it with Isaac, that the Lord said he would bless him. And the teaching behind that is as Christians, as true believers of God, we are truly blessed when we are in his will. But consequently, when we were outside, when we are outside the will of God, we are, we forfeit our blessing. We, we are uh, sometimes um, to our own will, the Lord will allow us to suffer the consequences of the things that we've done. That's the old adage, it's our bed and we have to lay it. So, but the Lord wanted to bless Isaac, he's obedient, that I will make thee, verse four, thy seed to multiply as stars of heaven, I will give unto thy seed all these countries, and in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. So, and then we see the same lie again, that Isaac's uh, uh, forebearers, that uh, his father had told Abraham, and he, they asked him, uh, he told the men that his wife was his sister, that was the same Isaac. Abraham had told because he was afraid that they would take advantage of her because she was attractive. They would kill him and take advantage of her. But he lied, and that's the same sin. Sometimes sin often runs in families. And so moving along in the way of review of Genesis chapter 26, and we talked about how, by the way, you can go back and look at chapter 26 Bible study on YouTube, verse by verse there. And they were blessed, they began to dig wells. And in those days, water was a vital source, it still is in the Middle East. So as well was really important, the Lord blessed them in that endeavor as well. At the end of chapter 26, we see that Esau was 40 years old when he took a wife to Judah, the daughter of Barry, the Hittite and Bashabath, the daughter of Elon, the Hittite, which were a grief of mine unto Isaac and to Rebecca. And so that's the end of chapter 26. We're going to go into 27. Let's say a word of prayer. With my hand lifted up. And my mouth filled with praise, with the heart of thanksgiving, I will bless thee, O oh Lord, with my hand lifted up, and my mouth filled with praise, with the heart of thanksgiving. I will bless thee, O oh Lord, with my hands lifted up, and my mouth filled with praise, with the heart of thanksgiving, I will bless thee, O oh Lord, I will bless thee, O oh Lord, I will bless thee, O oh Lord. With the heart of thanksgiving, 
I will bless thee, O Lord. I will bless thee, O Lord. I will bless thee, O Lord. With the heart of thanksgiving, I will bless thee, O Lord. Lord, we certainly thank you. We're humble. Our head is bowed down with us, so we're not worthy. Anything you have bestowed upon our life. Forgive us for all of our sins. Wash us in your blood. Let us overcome the temptations and the wiles and the tricks of the devil. Let us love God, love you more than the things of the world. Lord, as we open up this Bible study, let us humble ourselves and take heed to the word. Lord, let me be the Bible teacher that you call it for in this last evil day. Open up the word and reveal it to me, Lord. Wash my heart, Lord. Wash my mind, wash my hands. Bless those that are listening in. Bless those families that are listening in. Bless those that are trying to make a step back towards the Lord. Strengthen those, Lord, Jesus, that are struggling with addiction, Lord. We pray you, Lord, that we be strong in the Lord, the power is might. we put on the whole armor of God. we bless our coming out and our coming in, Lord Jesus. Have your way in this place, Lord. Around and under the sound of our voice, those that are listening. Bless their homes, bless their children. Bless their family. When I say bless, bring us all to the knowledge of Christ. Bless Antioch and let this word go out in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. I thank you. Thank you for, for doing it in with us. Let's go to Genesis chapter 27. What did you get from Jesus? What did you get from Jesus? What did you get from Jesus? Down in your soul, I got joy on the inside, joy on the inside, joy on the inside. That's what I got from the Lord. It came to pass, this is 27 and 1, it came to pass that when Isaac was old and his eyes were dim so that he could not see, he called Esau, his eldest son, said unto him, my son, he said unto him, behold, here I am I. He said, behold, now I am old, and I know not the day of my death. Now therefore take, I pray thee, thy weapons, thy quiver, thy bow, and go out into the field and take me some venison. Okay, so we see we are back to the story of Jacob and Esau. We read about the early parts of their story with the birthright and uh, Jacob still in the birthright and we got into a little bit about the teaching of the birthright and that once Jacob or Esau yielded up that birthright excuse me to Jacob there was no taking it back you could sort of sign it over there's a lot of lot going into that and Isaac couldn't hear that blessing there wasn't no take backs on that kind of thing so here we are back to the the rest of this story, these two brothers, the twins, Esau was born first, but the blessing of the, of the first one will fall upon Jacob. You see that pattern throughout the Bible that last shall be first, the first shall be last. Often you will see the firstborn or the secondborn inheriting the blessing of the firstborn. That's just the way the Lord operates in the Bible, that those that you would think are ahead of the curve, sometimes they're not the ones that's the most blessed, but it's that one, like David, that shepherd boy, the Lord used him uh, in a mighty way above all his older brothers. So we see that Isaac, when the Bible says in verse one, that his eyes were dim, that he could not see, he called Esau his eldest son. And what he's getting ready to do is pronounce that blessing on him. He knew that he was gonna die. So he pronounced that blessing on him. There are certain things that we should do the Bible says, get your house in order. When we, when we see that our days are numbered and we're on our deathbed, we should start trying to get our spiritual house in order. And you got a lot of foolish people that say, you know, when, I'm a, I can't wait to, when, you know, when I go to hell, we party down there with my friends. You're not going to be partying. Those individuals that are going to hell, they're not going to be down there having no party. They're going to be in eternal torment. But it behoove you, saints and friends, that you would build your spiritual house that you would remember that those things that are going on right now on this earth are, are really uh, secondary 
or tertiary, they're not as important as one would think. But that you remember the, uh, to keep the first things first. And so here we see uh, Isaac, he calls in Esau, he wants to put out the blessing on the first son, but here's the thing, uh, Esau had already given up that birthright. And, but he tells him to go out, take his bow, his, his bow and arrow, go out and hunt some deer meat, that's venison. And verse four, make me savory meat such as I love. So Isaac was articulating that this is something that he really likes. Bring my favorite meal, because I'm ready to die. And while I'm giving a blessing, I want to be eating some good food that I like. <laughs> Bring it to me, verse four, that I may eat, that my soul may bless thee before I die. There it is right there, he's gonna bless him. Where you die. Now listen, your children should you should leave your children something. You should leave them something natural. Don't, don't leave them with a, a bill. You know, it's I like the, the rock, the, the joke I hear. I heard Chris Chris Rock tell, he says, poor people, uh <laughs> rich people die with a wheel, poor people die with a bill. Listen, don't leave leave your children a bill, but leave them something. But most importantly, leave them a spiritual heritage. Show them how to come to Christ. Show them the best thing you can do for your children and your grandchildren is show them the Lord and let them see God in you. That's the best witness. And Rebecca heard what Isaac spake to Esau, his son. Esau went to the field to hunt for venison and to bring it. So Rebecca was overhearing now. Verse 6 Rebecca spake unto Jacob, her son, saying, Behold, I heard thy father speaking to Esau, thy brother, saying, Bring me venison and make me savory meat that I might eat. I may eat and bless thee before the Lord before my death. Verse 8, now therefore, my son, obey my voice according to that which I command thee. Go now, verse 9, saints, Genesis 27 and 9, go now to the flock, fetch me from thence two good kids of the goats. I will make them savory meat for thy father, such as he loveth. Thou shalt bring it to thy father, that he may eat, that he may bless thee before his death. And so here you see Rebecca is playing favorites. She has a favorite son. I know that you hear that conventional wisdom that uh, that that such and such was my favorite daughter, such and such was my favorite son, such and such was my best child. But that's the worst thing you can do is, is pit your children against each other and choose favorites. That's actually immature. They all should be equally favorites. You should love them all just the same. So right here, Rebecca is messing up by going to Jacob and having her undermine, having him undermine his brother, that's wrong. So anyway, she wants to see Jacob blessed, her favorite son. She gives him instructions on how to undermine Esau. That's what we see there. Go get a goat, go get two good uh, goats, uh, make them, cook them very well in a way that your father likes. And um, thou shalt bring it to thy father that he may eat, that he may bless thee before his death. So run in there before Esau get back. Hurry up and don't go hunt, but, but go out and cheat and find some goats and make your father think that it's venison. And then he will send a blessing upon you. He will give the blessing to you instead of Jacob, Esau. Verse 11, Jacob said to Rebekah's mother, behold, Esau, my brother, is a hairy man, and I am a smooth man. In other words, dad will know the difference because he has more hair on his arm than I do. He's more hairy or more smooth skinned. Verse 12, my father Peter mentioned will fill me. There it is, and I shall sing to, to him as a deceiver. And I shall bring a curse upon me and not a blessing. So if dad finds out, he's gonna know it's me. He's gonna know that I'm trying to trick him and he will curse me instead of bless me. Verse 13, his mother said unto him, upon me be thy curse, my son. Only obey my voice and go fetch me then. And so she said, don't worry about it. If anybody's going to be cursed, let it fall on me. But don't worry about it. I'll take care of it. Just, I got you, basically. We'll, we'll figure this out. And he went and fetched and brought them to his mother. And his mother may say, such as his father loved. And so I think I misspoke. The mother was preparing the food to give to Jacob, because apparently Jacob didn't know how to cook very well. And so the mother prepared it. And of course, Rebecca's going to know how to prepare it better. Rebecca took Billy Raymond, her oldest, eldest son, Esau, which were with her in the house and put them upon Jacob, her younger son. And so Raymond, in verse 15, is clothing. 
So they took one of Esau's outfits because it smelled like Esau, you know, a personal smell, and put it upon Jacob. Verse 16, a distinct smell. smell. And she put the skins of the kids of the goats upon his hands upon the smooth of his neck. So they took skin to make it, because keep in mind, his father was blind. They took the animal skin and put it on his hand and his arm and his neck to make it seem like he had hairy skin like Esau. They were going through a lot to pull this trick off. It's a very elaborate scheme to steal the birthright. Verse 17, she gave the savory meat and the bread which she had prepared into the hand of her son, Jacob. He came to his father. So this, this here's the trick. He said, my father, and he said, here, I, here am I. Who art thou, my son? And Jacob said to his father, I am Esau, that firstborn. So he was lying. I have done according as thou badest me. Arise, I pray thee, sit and eat my venison that thy soul may bless me. And so he pretended to be Esau. He's right there to get the blessing. This is Jacob. Now said to his son, how is it that thou hast found it so quickly, my son? He said, because the Lord, my God brought it to me. So he said, how did you hunt so quickly? You went right out there and caught that deer and brought it back, that venison. And then he's, Jacob lied again and said, the Lord brought it to me. So he blamed on the Lord. He really is messing up here. Verse 21, Isaac said unto Jacob, come near, I pray thee, that I may feel thee, my son, whether thou be my, my very own son, my very son Esau or not. So it seems to me that Isaac was a little skeptical because he says, come close to me that I may feel thee. In other words, feel your arms and your neck to see whether you be Esau or not. Verse 22, Jacob went near to Isaac, his father, he felt him and said, the voice is Jacob's voice, but the hands are the hands of Esau. So he recognized his voice. And every good parent can recognize the distinction between their children's voice. When I heard this story growing up, I always was thinking that, like, he should know the difference between the voices. So we, we can see that Isaac is skeptical. Verse 23, and he discerned, and he discerned him not because his hands were hairy as his brother's Esau's hands. So he blessed him. So once he felt the hands, he thought it, he was convinced that it was Isaac or that it was Esau. Once Isaac, the father, felt the hands, he was convinced that it was Esau. He said, art thou my very son Esau? He said, I am. So Jacob had a chance to be honest, but he lied again. Verse 25, he said, bring it near to me and I will eat my son's venison that my soul may bless thee. He brought it near to him. He did eat and brought him wine and he drank. And his father Isaac said unto him, Come near now and kiss me, my son. He came near and kissed him. He smelled the smell of his rain and blessed him and said, See, the smell of my son is as the smell of a field which the Lord hath blessed. So, what's going on in verse 27? Esau's clothes smells like the outdoors. Jacob does not because he's in the house all the time. He dwells in tents. He's always up on his mama. And Esau is out there hunting those clothes smell that way. So right when, so Rebecca was really intelligent and really cunning, I should say, to tell Jacob to put on Esau's clothes because that, that did the trick right there because once Isaac uh, smelt the garment, he thought for sure this is Esau. Verse 28, therefore God give thee of the dew of heaven and the fatness of the earth and the plenty of corn and wine. So I should also add that in those days, fathers have the authority, the spiritual authority to speak blessings over the children's life and pronounce blessings and whatever. God gave the fathers that special anointing that whatever they pronounce over the children's life would come to pass. Parents still have that so uh, to a certain extent, that gift where we can bless or curse our children, we can speak life over them, we can pronounce blessings into their life, or we can pronounce curses in the sense of parents that curse children and call the young ladies the B word, say you're not you know, good, you're gonna be just like your daddy. A lot of times the enemy will take that and work with that and make sure that's manifested. Vice versa, when we begin to speak positive 
in the Lord and say, you're going to be blessed. We can bless them. We can bless our children. So it's a, it's a lot of teaching in that. So speak with your grandchildren, nieces and nephews. Speak blessings over them. Speak positively to them. Don't speak negatively. Even when you're frustrated, even when they're disobedient, don't curse them, but bless them. It's not to say don't discipline them or reprimand them, but be a blessing. Speak blessings to them. Verse 29, this is continuing the blessing. Let people serve thee. The nations bow down to thee. Be Lord over thy brethren. And let thy mother's sons bow down to thee. Cursed be everyone that curses thee. And blesses thee. Bless be he that blesses thee. That's a powerful blessing. Those that are a blessing to, to you will be blessed. Those that are cursed to you will be cursed. That's a powerful blessing right there. Verse 30. Now we're going to see Esau, he's finally come back hunting, and you don't know what has transpired. Look, let's look in at verse 38. Let's listen in. It came to pass as soon as Isaac had made an end of blessing Jacob. Like, as soon as he got done, Jacob was yet yeah, scarce going out from the presence of Isaac, his father. Soon as he got his blessing, that little rascal, he got out of Dodge, Jacob. That Esau, his brother, came in from his hunting. The end of verse 30. Esau comes in from hunting. Verse 31. He also made savory meat and brought it unto his father and said unto his father, let my father arise and eat of his son's venison that thy soul may be blessed. Uh, that thy soul may bless me. Verse 32. And Isaac, his father, said to him, who art thou? He said, I am thy son, thy firstborn, Esau. And Isaac trembled very exceedingly and said, who? Where is he that hath taken venison and brought it to me? And I have eaten all before thou camest, and have blessed him. Yea, he shall be blessed. When Esau heard the words of his father, this is you can just feel the agony in the text that Esau had. You can just feel his pain. Verse 34 of Genesis chapter 27. When Esau heard the words of his father, he cried with a great exceeding bitter cry. And said unto his father, Bless me, even me also, O oh my father. So he, he cried bitterly because he knew what had happened. It dawned on him. He said, Thy brother came with subtlety and have taken away thy blessing. Jacob came and stole the blessing. Remember early on, we read a few chapters back that he tricked Esau for the blessing. Esau came in tired and Esau sold his birthright. Or bowl of pottage, verse 36. He said, It's not he rightly named Jacob, for he has supplanted me, the little trickster, supplanter, Jacob. He has supplanted me these two times. And he's going back over. Look at verse 36. He took away my birthright. Behold, now he has taken away my blessing. Wow. He said, Thou hast not reserved the blessing for me. Verse 37. And Isaac answered and said unto the to Esau, behold, I have made him Lord, thy Lord. The Lord have made, behold, I have made him thy Lord, and all his brethren have I given to him for servants. And with corn and wine have I sustained him. What shall I do now unto thee, my son? So he made Jacob ruler over Esau and his children, his servants. Esau said unto his father, Hast thou but one blessing, my father? Bless me also, even me also. Oh, my father. And Esau lifted up his voice and wept. Verse 39. And Isaac, his father, answered and said unto him, Behold, thy dwelling shall be the fatness of the earth and of the dew of heaven from above. By thy sword shall thou live and shall serve thy brother. It shall come to pass when thou shalt have the dominion that thou shalt break his yoke from off thy neck. And Esau hated Jacob because of the blessing wherewith his father blessed him. That's why wow. it says he hated him. He hated his own brother. It's, it's a teaching in that too. We have to get these things right with our family. There's so much family tension. The people that haven't talked to each other in 15 years and there's family members that are fighting and arguing. They're so resentful and bitter. And as Christians, we have to get forgiveness for that and get healing. Otherwise, they continue to cause a rift. A lot of times, these things are manifested at funerals. But here we see that hatred in verse 41. Esau hated Jacob. 
And Esau said to his heart, the days of mourning for my father are at hand. Then will I slay my brother Jacob. That's also insight into bitterness and unforgiveness and anger. It can manifest itself in physical violence against another person or physical violence against ourselves, self-hatred or ultimately murder. Murder came into his heart and sort of premeditated murder, if you will. And he says, uh, the days of mourning for my father right here, and then when I slay my brother Jacob. So basically after Isaac dies, our father, and we go through the ritual mourning, I want to look to kill my own brother because he stole everything that I have of value, basically. Verse 42, these words of Esau, her elder son, were told to, Jacob, to Rebecca. And she sent and called Jacob, her younger son, and said unto him, Behold, thy brother Esau is touching thee, doth comfort himself, purposing to kill thee. As touching thee, behold, thy brother Esau is touching thee, doth comfort himself, and purposing to kill thee. That means concerning you, you should know that your brother's trying to kill you. So somebody, one of the servants must have heard Esau say it, and they went back and told Rebecca. Now, therefore, my son, obey my voice. Arise, flee thou to Laban, my brother, to hear him. Uh, now, keep in mind, we're going to come back to Laban. Laban is a really significant uh, biblical character. Where he's going to come back. The name's going to come back up when we get read more about Jacob and when he gets married and those kind of things. So, but, but also, back to what we were saying, back to the text, Rebecca tells Jacob to flee and go to his uncle Laban in Haran. Haran. And tarry with him a few days until thy brother's fury turn away. Verse 44, until thy brother's anger turn away from thee, and he forget that which thou hast done to him. Then I will sin and fetch thee from thence. Why should I be deprived also of you both in one day? So she favors Jacob, still out of all of this foolishness. She is still favoring Jacob. But also she's trying to save his life because she knows how serious Esau is. And the crazy thing about it is she had a hand in this whole thing. And as a mom, she, she was a terrible mom because she stirred the pot. Now she's trying to fix it up. And the devil will have you do that. You mess something up real bad. And then you try to lie and do other things and see to try to cover it up. That's what's going on with Rebecca. Verse 46, and Rebecca said to Isaac, I am weary of my life because of the daughters of Heth. If Jacob take a wife of the daughters of Heth, such as these which are of the daughters of the land, what good shall my life do me? And so that's Rebecca talking to Isaac, and she is concerned that Jacob might take a wife of the heathen women, but that is not the case. So she suggests to going back to verse 44 45. Rebecca suggests to Isaac, why don't you go hide out of Laban's until Esau calms down? So that's the plan. So we'll stop there. Uh, we thank God for you. Thank God for Jesus. Thank God for Jesus. Thank God. Oh, Jesus, bless your name. Thank God. Oh, Jesus, thank God. Oh, Jesus, thank God. Oh, Jesus, bless your name. Lord, we thank you for your word. We ask that you give us strength to hold on. Hold on when the rough days come. You let us be strong, Lord. Thank you for this Bible study until we meet again. Jesus is saying amen. God bless you. Until we meet again, we will see you next time. Amen and amen.